Right, I have now finished Metal Gear Solid 5. Truly finished the story. Um, I've now seen the ending. The true ending. That everyone has been kind of alluding to weeks. To me. That uh, it was shit. And now I've seen it for myself. And wow. That ending was incredible. <laughs> like, I could see why a lot of people had issues with it. They were like, oh, you know, I don't... You can't rip Big Boss away from me. You know, I, you can't tell me I'm playing as Big Boss all the way through and then just have some sort of shitty, it wasn't really him kind of scenario. I don't see that as an issue. I see that, if anything, as a, as a stroke of genius because the game is called Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. And when I first started playing it, I thought The Phantom Pain was just about he's lost his arm, he's feeling literal Phantom Pain. Then I thought it was just about the phantom pain of all the soldiers they lost when Mother Base got destroyed in Ground Zeroes. But then as the game progresses, there's just instance upon instance of different kinds of phantom pain that all the different various characters are feeling. And then the, the master stroke at the end is he just goes, and now I'm going to make you feel some phantom pain by taking Snake away from you. And I thought, I mean, it goes back to, I didn't see it coming. But I kind of, sort of, saw something come in at the beginning and then dismissed it. So you're in the hospital and then uh, the doctor says, okay, you know, make your face. And then you make your face. And I thought nothing of it. I just thought, okay, this is just creating your avatar for the, for the multiplayer that's coming down the road. So I made my avatar and then it cut back to him showing my avatar in the mirror. And I was like, I'm not going to play as him for the whole game, am I? And then it cut back to Big Boss, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, here we, right, here we go. That was just for the multiplayer business. Then there was a whole scenario with Ishmael in the hospital, and I was like, you sound just like Kiefer Sutherland. You don't sound like Kiefer Sutherland doing Big Boss's voice, but you sound like Kiefer Sutherland doing Kiefer Sutherland's voice. And I thought, what is that? But then when he said to Venom Snake, Oh, don't worry, you're talking to yourself. I was like, oh, okay, I think I know what this is. I think this is, because the doctor mentioned hallucination, so that was on my brain. So I thought, okay, maybe maybe this Ishmael, he's not really there. He's just being hallucinated by Big Boss, and that this is Big Boss's subconscious finding a way to get him through the hospital scenario, you know, to come to terms with waking up from a coma. That's It's like the physical embodiment of his training coming back almost, you know. So I thought that was what that was. And then the man on fire turned up and I was like, this has got to be a hallucination, except that all the guards were shooting him and being killed by him. So I thought maybe all the guards were hallucinated as well. So, but then I started to, I started to abandon the idea of the, the hallucinations. I thought, nah, maybe, maybe there aren't this many hallucinations. And then at the end with the big flaming whale, I'm barely certain that was a hallucination. Um, so then that whole business happened and then you're in Africa, uh, you're in Afghanistan and then you go and do all that business. But then you get to the end of, the, well, just after that, there's the bit of big, the, there's the scene of Big Boss and he's got this cassette player and he's got the tape that says from the man who sold the world. And I was like, that's okay. Is Big Boss the man who sold the world? I don't know. And then he put it on and then that, then that song played and I was like, okay, you know, this song's all right. You know, I'm digging it. Wait a minute. Is this Bowie? I can't stand Bowie's music, but I like this song and it's very apt for the game. So I carried on playing and I... Uh, I was loving it, and then at the end of the game, you go through the second run through the hospital, and I knew that was the end of the game. When I looked at the mission objective, it said, escape the hospital, I was like, ah, this will be the last mission then. And then I was thoroughly confused when he had the two photographs, and he moved one to the side, and I was like, that's me! I was like, was I? I was racking my brains. I was like, who else was in the chopper in Ground Zeroes? Eh, Morpho, no, it can't be Morpho. Am I, am I the medic? Is that why you never saw the medic's face? And then I, I basically went through the whole of the hospital chapter again, just completely confused, not knowing what was going on. That was obviously Kojima's aim. He was like, give them just enough information to make them think about shit, but don't give them enough to tell them what's going on. And I did think it was odd, going back to the first time you do the mission, when you're in the ambulance and then it crashes and the bandaged up guy is gone. And I thought, maybe he was a hallucination, but hallucinations don't drive ambulances as far as I'm aware. So whatever. And then of course it turns out the big boss was the guy in the bandages. And I thought, when I played through that mission at the end of the game when it got to the ambulance bit and it crashed and it cut to black and then Ocelot went come on boss let's go I thought maybe that was a sliding door sort of thing I thought maybe the real big boss had died and Ocelot just picked up some other guy that was going to be big boss from now on 
and everything I'd done so far in the game what was what would have happened had Big Boss survived the crash. Of course, five minutes later, I learned that's not the case. I'm the fake Big Boss, which blew my mind. I was like, at first I thought, this is awesome. Big Boss is just, Big Boss got out of the game. You know, when Ocelot handed him his papers, I was like, he's, done, like, he's out of the game, you know. And then, of course, I listened to all the cassette tapes at the end and how Zero was like, look, you know, got to kind of, got to keep Snake safe. Can't remember why, but got to keep Snake safe. So let's have this old Venom Snake business going on. And that just blew my mind. I keep saying it blows my mind, but for the past couple of days, I've just been, every couple of minutes, well, every couple of minutes, every while, I'll just sit there and I'll just think about it. And I'm just dwelling on that ending. And I'm like, it's so cool. It's so cool. Because I thought they can't top the ending to Metal Gear Solid 4. The, the ending to Metal Gear Solid 4 was like, I don't know, 45 minutes long or something. It was just, it was like Lord of the Rings 3. Just loads and loads of cutscenes, just one after the other. But it was amazing because it tied everything up. And Kojima made that game with the plan of it being his last one. So that game was just a treat for the fans. Now, say what you want about it, gameplay-wise, it is a treat for the fans. You go back to Shadow Moses, you have a fucking Metal Gear battle with Liquid Ocelot, and all this shit ties into each other. You find out that Sigint ended up being Donald Anderson, who was the, the DARPA chief who was killed and impersonated by Decoy Octopus in Metal Gear Solid 1. All of these links, the dovetailing, and I was like, mwah. So I thought, he can't top that. He can't... I mean, especially given the poor story delivery system they went for with the cassettes. What the fuck, mate? Bring back the codec and the, and the long cutscenes. The cutscenes in this game are amazing. I think they're better than the cutscenes in most of the other Metal Gear Solid games, but there's just not enough of them. There should be... A, there, there should just be way more. But one of my biggest complaints about the game actually was completely just dismissed when I found out the real ending. I was chatting to a guy at work, and I was like, ah, oh, but, you know, they, they've changed... I, I, I don't consider him Snake anymore. He's, like, he, I can barely call him Big Boss, because he's not even the same guy. Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 3 and Peace Walker, and to a lesser extent, Portable Ops, he's very chatty, you know, he's just like, okay, I'm going to sit here, and we're going to discuss a lot of things, and he was very knowledgeable on a lot of subjects, and then you play Metal Gear Solid 5, and he's just, like, a silent guy. He's got, like, one page of dialogue for the whole fucking game. And I was like, this is ridiculous. This isn't the same character. It just feels like a blank slate for the player to project themselves onto. And that's because that's exactly what it was. So now, like, it, it wasn't Big Boss. It wasn't meant to feel... Well, it was meant to feel like Big Boss, but it wasn't... I can't complain that it didn't feel like Big Boss. I can't put that as a complaint against the game because it's not Big Boss. So, boom, out the window. So I was like, well, you know, oh, well, the only thing stopping me giving Metal Gear Solid 5 10 out of 10 is just the shitty story delivery system with the tapes. They're like, here you go, you can listen to a tape. That way you don't have to stop the action and listen to codec calls every five minutes. And it's like, well, I'd rather have the codec calls because it's kind of tricky to have a story important cassette playing while you're infiltrating an outpost. You've got to concentrate on everything around you and listen to the tape. And also, if you're doing a mission, which is what you're doing most of the game, if you've got a tape playing, and then you approach a base, and then Miller will go, that's Yabby Yahogo Outpost. You're like, okay, thanks. The tape was really quiet when you said that. Now I've got to go back and, and listen to what they said. So every time there's a radio transmission, it cuts out some of the tape, and then you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, if this was a codec call, it would just be one conversation in your face that you can pay attention to. So I cannot give, as much as I love Metal Gear Solid Five, I cannot give it a 10 out of 10, because I think they could have made it better. I think they should have just ditched the cassette bullshit, making it sound like a radio play, and just have, I mean, maybe not even codec calls, but just have some more dialogue in it. Have some more story in the game that I buy. I love Metal Gear Solid games for the story, above all else. Metal Gear Solid 5 is the first Metal Gear Solid game where I would say I, I play it for the gameplay more than the story. And that's not, I mean, the gameplay is amazing. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that the gameplay is so good. I'm just saying it's a bad thing that the story is so lacking. So that's why I can't give it a 10 out of 10. Um, now, as for the true ending that people are calling it, <clears throat> I've seen the cut content, right? After I finished the... Uh, I heard about it, I was like, I'm not going to delve into that shit. Because spoilers. So then I finished the game and I was like, now it's time to delve into that shit. Actually, this was good timing. I finished the story and then the day after that, Angry Joe put his review out and I was like, boom, I'll watch his review. Because, you know, I like watching Angry Joe. He's funny. His, his reviews are entertaining. So I watched his review, and he was mentioning the cut content, and I was like, that reminds me. Fucking look for that shit. So, for anyone that doesn't know, 
some people data mined the PC version of the game and they found files and videos and titles and things that say chap that there was going to be a chapter three in the game called Peace. There's only two chapters. So, of course, everyone goes, what is this? Like, unfinished content, so it was just straight cut. And it's pretty important storyline-wise. I mean, the last time we see Eli in the, in, the, in the game, as it is, is him flying away with Sahelanthropus and Psycho Mantis and the African child soldiers. They're all leaving. That's it, you never see him again. This cut content, you actually go to the island they went to, and you have Big Boss ha well, Venom Snake has a showdown at, at the see. I'm gonna say Venom. I'm gonna say Big Boss, and I'll explain why. Big Boss has a fight with Eli, Liquid Snake, and this is where they confirm. Well, I mean, they kind of confirm that it's. They confirm Eli is Liquid Snake in the post credits. Um, well, the pre credits, you know, timeline role that they do in some of their games. Anyway, you go there. And you see, th there's this awesome cutscene that was like 30% complete. So there was no facial animations or anything like that. But they had all the all the components, all the characters, and all the dialogue was in there. So it was it was complete enough to watch. So you're watching the cutscene, and uh, Eli uses Sahelanthropus to destroy this XOF unit that turned up to destroy him. And then, you know, he has a face-to-face -face confrontation with with Big Boss. And then there's loads of um, concept art because this this would be the mission where the concept art is happening. And it basically says it shows concept art of Sahelanthropus fighting like the whole of Mother Base in the jungle. And I thought, oh mate, that is the final boss battle that's missing from this game because I thought the final boss battle was the first time I fought Sahelanthropus when I got the the fake ending. And I was like, well, this is weird. Like, I'm not going to complain that there's no that that that's the final boss, but then there's more game. Because it's different, you know, it's not just a case of that's the final boss. I know I've beaten the game now. No, it's, it's, it's Kojima pushing the boundaries. Now I find out that there was meant to be a real boss battle, final boss battle against Eli in Sahelanthropus. And it got cut. And no one knows why. And we, well, some people know why. We'll probably never know why. But the common theory is Konami. It, it's known that Konami have just given zero fucks to making games over the last couple of months. They're just like, fuck it, we don't want to make games. We want to make money. So they're moving over to... They're, they're not going to make any more AAA games on console and PC. They're making pachinko machines, which I think is like Japanese slot machines or some bullshit, and it's going to have Metal Gear Solid slapped on the side of it, dragging the name through the mud. Um, so yeah, a lot of people, myself included, reckon Konami just said to Kojima, Hey Kojima, you're spending a bit too much money, mate. What are you doing? And he was like, fine, okay, I'll cut this. Done. Or they went, hey, you're taking a bit too long making this fucking game, man. What are you doing? And he went, fine, cut, gone. Or they went in and went, cut, gone. So that was Mission 51. Now, a lot of people think that's the true ending. I don't think it is. I think what we got was the true ending. I think Chapter 51, which is what... No, Mission fi Episode 51, which is what Chapter 3 would have been, where you fight Eli. That would have been after Mission 50, obviously. And then once you've, once you've beaten that and beaten the boss, then you would get the ending that we got, where you find out that... Ven that Big Boss is actually Venom Snake and there's all that business. So I do believe we got the true ending. We just didn't get the full ending. So, you know, I'm happy with the ending on Metal Gear Solid 5. Because like I said, I, I don't think they could have topped the ending on Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear Solid 4 was a treat for the fans. Metal Gear Solid 5 is a love letter to the fans. It's just like, look. You guys... I mean, this is what's so genius about it. Going back to the name of Phantom Pain. He didn't just make us feel... Like we've lost Snake and that's our own Phantom Pain. You could argue the cut content is also the final Phantom Pain. Because everyone's feeling Phantom Pain because that's missing. You know, it should be there. It really fucking should. So I'm hoping they release it as free DLC. If they charge for it, I'll still buy it. But I, I'll feel dirty as fuck doing it. But I'll have to buy it because I love that game. Um, Yeah, but one thing I liked especially about the idea of... Uh, I keep going to call him Naked Snake. Venom Snake not talking much and being being about the player is it's kind of like repeating Raiden but doing it better to please everyone. A lot of people hated Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2. They were like, oh he's a whiny little bitch. Oh he's 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 inexperienced. He's a noob. I want to be Solid Snake. And I was to an extent I was a little bit like that. I was like, oh I want to be Solid Snake. Oh well. You know. And if you play the game you know that Raiden is meant to be an analogue for the player. You know, the player is only trained in VR sessions, the games. You know, he's, he's a rookie, like, in actual combat experience. He gets emotional. He looks up to Solid Snake, as the players do. 
So that was, I think it was well done. Metal Gear Solid 2 is a masterpiece. A lot of people didn't like Raiden. They retconned that. Well, I say they retconned it. They fixed that by making him an absolute badass cyborg ninja in Metal Gear Solid 4. And then Rising Revengeance. So, you know, they kind of fixed that. But with this, it's kind of the same. Again, you think you're going to be playing as someone, a particular snake. And then it turns out that you're not. Except this time, you didn't know. Because we were so good. The player has, has had all these years playing all these other games, getting real good, knowing all the missions. This is what they said. They said the medic was their best soldier, which I find a bit odd. Out of a whole army, your medic was your best soldier, the best uh, person for uh, like fighting people. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a member of the combat team be your best soldier? But, you know, I gloss over this. Because it's not really important. What is important is that the character, the medic, he, like Venom Snake, he is us. We are the fifth snake. Liquid. Yeah, naked, liquid, solid, solidus. Yeah, Venom. We are the fifth snake, the player. Like, he's basically handing the reins to us. He said, you are... And B Big Boss says to Venom Snake... In a cassette tape, he says, you are as much Big Boss as I am. And that's him talking to the... This is the way I've interpreted it. I was a bit concerned when the mission started, and there was a quote from Nietzsche that said, um, there are no facts, only interpretations. And I was like, oh, for God's sake, that means this is all going to be vague and hazy, and they're not going to be like they did in all the other games, where they ended the games, and it was like black and white. This happened, then this happened, then this happened. I thought they're going to be nebulous and gaseous and not very good. But no, it was good. It left it open to interpretation because a lot of people are interpreting it badly and some people are interpreting it goodly. And I think I'm interpreting it well because I, I, I enjoy the ending. So I appreciate what he did. I appreciate what he tried to do. And when they were talking about the medic, they said, look, the medic knows all your missions. He knows your, your strategies inside out. Who better to take on the role of Big Boss and keep the legend of Big Boss alive while you're out back building your fucking... Out of Heaven that's going to be featured in the future games, which actually came out in the past, but they're set in the future. Which is now the past. So yeah, I like the ending to Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm sure there's something that I was going to talk about that I haven't, and I'll probably think about it as soon as I press that stop button, but it'll be too late by then. So um, yeah, I like the ending. Um, it turns out the... the I, I was disappointed that I didn't get to see Big Boss become a bad guy in the game, though, because I really thought that Knowing what game was going to come next chronologically, I thought, we're going to see Big Boss become a bad guy. Nope! You didn't even see Big Boss, technically. You know, well, you see him at, at the beginning and at the end. You don't actually... You're not him. But they did a good job of fooling everyone into thinking that we were him. I say everyone. Some people saw the, uh, saw the saw through the ruse. They were on a ruse cruise. Um, but yeah, that's it. I like it. I don't think there's going to be any more Metal Gear Solids. Because, as I say, Konami have said, we've got no interest in making games with the Fox engine. Uh, we're just going to keep the Metal Gear logo and slap it onto all of our shitty gambling machines. So that informant that came out months and months ago, this there was this informant uh, from Konami, and he basically said, look, you know, they're going to burn the franchises they've got to the ground, like Metal Gear and, and others. They're going to burn their franchises to the ground. And yeah, they are. They, Metal Gear Solid 5, Metal Gear Solid is riding a wave of greatness now, it's never been as big as it is now. The Fox engine, brilliant engine, developed, used for one game, boom. See you later, they're not going to make it anymore, so it's like, oh god, I hope they just sell the rights to Metal Gear to someone that is good. I mean, is a Metal Gear Solid game worth buying if Kojima didn't make it? Probably not. So, that's what I think about the ending to Metal Gear Solid 5. In a nutshell, mwah!